The next talk will be given by Tsua Jin, and it's on uh, hardness magnification for uh, sparse NP languages. Thank you. Uh, thank you for the introduction. Uh, this is joint work with uh, Li Jiechen and Ryan Williams from MIT. Uh, I'll first uh, uh, give the definition of the minimum circuit size problem. The MCSP with a uh, circuit size parameter S of M takes as input an M variable Boolean function encoded as a truth table of length N equal to two to the M. And we are going to decide if F has a circuit of size at most S of M. Uh, in other words, we are going to uh, decide if the input string can be compressed into a succinct uh, circuit representation. So the MCSP problem is clearly in MP. Uh, the witness is simply a correct circuit, which has size at most linear in the length of the truth table. And uh, uh, it's solvable in roughly n times two to the s of, n, of, s of m time by simply enumerating all the uh, circuits of size smaller than s of m. And if the s of m gets bigger, then this uh, brute force algorithm will be uh, slower. And if we uh, believe that strong PRGs exist, then uh, MCSP with a uh, big enough polynomial parameter say m to the 10th, is not solvable in p slash poly. Because uh, otherwise, uh, by Rosborov and Rudic, uh, this would give us a natural property which could be used to break PRGs. So we believe that uh, MCSP m to the 10th is not in p slash poly. However, if we could uh, prove a very weak lower bound on this language, then we would have a breakthrough results in complexity theory. In a recent work by McKay, Murray, and Williams, it is shown that if MCSP m to the 10th doesn't have circuits of n times polylog n size and uh, uh, polylog n depth, then MP is not in p slash poly. Uh, this surprising phenomenon is called hardness magnification. It magnifies a very weak lower bound into a, a very strong one. Uh, there are also similar magnification results for uh, a different language, the MKTP, which is also a compression problem, uh, though it uses a different complexity measure instead of circuit size. Uh, we're not going to define here, but uh, roughly speaking, uh, the measure is like uh, how much information is needed to generate the string quickly. Or we could also view MKTP as a version of MCSP with an X or Oracle gates. So MKTP uh, uh, looks like a harder problem than MCSP. And in a recent work by Oliveira, uh, Peak, and Santanum, uh, it has shown that if certain approximate version of MKTP doesn't have uh, n cubed times polylog n sized De Morgan formulas, then exp is not in NC1. So uh, we, I have listed two uh, previous results that are most relevant to this talk, but there are still many other uh, harness magnification results from literature. For example, if approximate max clique requires super linear circuits, then MP is not in P slash poly. Or uh, if K vertex cover uh, is not solvable in near linear time and uh, small space, then P is not equal to MP. Uh, so uh, there are uh, two different views toward the uh, harness magnification. Uh, one of them uh, believes that harness magnification uh, provides new approaches to proving strong lower bounds. Uh, Rasborov and uh, Rudich introduced the natural proof barrier which says that if we want to prove a, a lower bound against a very strong circuit class, then the proof has to be uh, non-natural. And it is argued that hardness magnification can bypass the natural proof barrier. Uh, a heuristic argument is that the hardness magnification seems to yield strong lower bounds only for certain functions, not for most of them. And this violates the largeness condition of the natural proofs. Uh, in a recent work, there is also some more rigorous uh, argument uh, supporting this. 
it is proved that in some cases, the required weak lower bounds for magnification actually implies the non-existence of natural proofs. Uh, so it, uh, it looks promising that we could uh, somehow uh, first prove a weak lower bound, possibly using some uh, natural, na natural proof techniques, and then use Harnick's magnification to get uh, strong lower bounds. So it is interesting to compare the lower bound required for magnification with uh, the lower bound that we currently, currently know how to prove. So in this example, uh, we require a nearly cubic size De Morgan formula lower bound. And uh, actually, we, uh, for this language, the MKTP, we know how to prove a non-trivial n to the 1.99 size formula lower bound. So if we could improve this by a factor of n to the 1 plus epsilon, then we would have a breakthrough results. And here is the, another example. In a different computational model, uh, the formula of XORs, which are uh, De Morgan formulas where each leaf node computes an XOR function over input bits. In this model, the required uh, lower bounds is only n times polylog of m. And uh, interestingly, we actually uh, know how to prove a much stronger lower bound in this model. Uh, however, it is for a different language, the F2 inner product. Uh, but the this problem appears to be a much easier problem than the uh, MKTP. So if we could adapt the proof techniques of this lower bound to the MKTP language, then we would also have breakthrough lower bounds. Uh, however, from another point of view, uh, Harnick's magnification indicates that proving weak lower bounds are even harder than we previously thought. Uh, it implies that uh, proving some almost linear size lower bound is already as hard as proving super polynomial lower bounds. So this kind of uh, reshapes our intuition about what is, uh, what is weak and uh, what is strong. So given these uh, previous results, uh, it is natural to ask the following question. What is special about MCSP and the MKTP? Uh, why do they have such surprising uh, magnification phenomenon? Uh, is it because that they are compression problems? Uh, our observation is that uh, these problems are all sparse languages because of the uh, small size parameter m to the 10th. The number of ES instances in MCSP S of m is uh, at most the number of different circuits of size uh, at most S of M. So MCSP M to the 10th is actually a uh, quasi-polynomially sparse language. And for MKTP, uh, although we didn't define, but uh, it is also a sparse language for some similar reason. So our uh, main result in this paper is that hardness magnification holds not only for sparse MCSP, but for all sparse enough MP languages. That is to say, if we could prove a small lower bound for any sufficiently sparse MP, MP problem, then we could prove super polynomial lower bounds. So here is the uh, statement of our main theorem. that L be any sub-exponentially sparse MP language. If L doesn't have a uh, n to the 1.01 size circuit, then for all k, MP doesn't have n to the k size formula. Uh, sorry, n to the k size circuit. And we also have uh, similar results for other computational models. Uh, for example, for formulas, the required lower bound is n to the 3.01. And for branching programs, we require uh, n to the uh, 2.01. We can compare this with uh, the uh, previous results by McKay, Murray, and Williams on the MCSP. Uh, uh, their theorems have consequences like mp nodding p slash poly. Well, uh, we could only get uh, mp nodding size n to the k for all k. Uh, however, our techniques are more fine-grained and can apply to more restricted models, such as formulas and branching programs. Uh, but uh, their uh, techniques uh, cannot. 
And uh, uh, we could compare the uh, lower bounds required in our magnification theorems with the state-of-the-art MP lower bounds. And uh, we could find that uh, they nearly match up to an n to the epsilon factor. Uh, using our techniques, we could also prove some uh, new Hannes magnification theorems for MCSP. For example, if uh, MCSP m to the 10th doesn't have n, n cubed times polylog n size De Morgan formulas, then P space is not in NC1. And we also have similar results for other models. And we, we could also compare this with the best known MCSP lower bound in uh, the recent ICOP, which says that MCSP uh, 2 to the m over 10m requires roughly n cube size formulas, which is pretty close to our hypothesis. Uh, but unfortunately, the uh, sparsity doesn't require our, uh, doesn't uh, satisfy our requirement. Uh, we require m to the 10th, but the, their MCSP is a, a dense version of MCSP. Uh, we also have similar magnification results for the MKTP language. And this improves on the uh, previous results, which required lower bounds for an approximate version of MKTP. Well, we only require the exact version. And uh, our results also apply to much more restricted computational models, which would make uh, proving lower bounds easier. So if uh, L is a, a sub-exponentially sparse MP language that is not computable by an n to the 1.01 time, n to the 0.01 space deterministic algorithm, with only n to the 0.01 uh, bits of advice, then MP is not in size n to the k for all k. Uh, note that uh, this model is actually much weaker than the circuits of size n to the 1.01 because of the uh, small space constraint and the limited non-uniformity. And the, the hypothesis is, uh, looks pretty close to what we can prove. We can construct a, a language that has this lower bound even without the space constraint. And this language is even in poly time, not only in MP. However, the, the sparsity is not enough for magnification. We could only get a 2 to the uh, n to the uh, 0.01 times n sparsity. While for the magnification, we require a 2 to the n to the little of 1. Uh, if we could make, the, make it sparser, then we would have uh, breakthrough results. Uh, in the rest of this talk, I will give the proof of one of our main theorems, uh, which uh, magnifies a nearly cubic De Morgan formula lower bound into a strong lower bound. We're going to prove the contrapositive. We'll assume that MP has n to the k size formula for some k. And our goal is to design an n to the 3.01 size formula for any given sub-exponentially sparse MP language L. I'll first give some uh, very informal intuition about uh, our proof. So we have a, a sparse MP language L, and we want to construct an auxiliary MP language K. And we want to have a one-to-one uh, -one correspondence between the yes instances in the, in, of L with the yes instances of K. So basically, we want to uh, want that the yes instances of L can fit into the truth table of the auxiliary language K. Because uh, L is sparse, so there are not too many uh, yes instances. So the truth table of K uh, doesn't need to be too big. So we can make the input length of K uh, very small. And then we'll somehow uh, construct a very small formula for L using some K oracle gates. Then we'll use the assumption that MP has n to the K size formula to uh, implement these k oracle gates using very small formulas. 
and uh, this will blow up the uh, size of the construction by only an uh, n to the epsilon factor. So, so our final construction will have a size which is slightly bigger than n cube. So this is uh, an intuition. It's uh, basically a kernelization idea. Uh, it's uh, not uh, exactly what we'll do, but uh, it's uh, what it's going to be, uh, it's going to look like. So now we'll uh, describe the proof in more detail. First, we'll set the parameter t to be slightly bigger than the log of the sparsity. Then there is a hash function that maps an m-bit string into a t-bit string, such that uh, all the yes instances of L are mapped into distinct images. Uh, so this is a perfect hash function. And this hash function uh, has a seed length only O of t. Uh, so, uh, so it's, uh, so it's like for any given sparse language L, there is only, uh, there's always a way to pick a correct seed S such that the hash function described by this seed can, uh, can be perfect on the yes instances of L. Uh, and there's a, an additional uh, property that the hash function is linear over F2. Uh, the construction of this hash function is uh, quite standard. We simply pick some coordinates from the error creating code and the, uh, let them be the hash value. Okay, uh, using this hash function, uh, we are going to define the auxiliary uh, MP problem K. The input is a hash seed and a hash value and the index i. And the output of this problem should be the i bit of a yes instance which has the uh, which has hash, hash, hash value equal to h, and uh, if we pick the correct s, which makes the hash function perfect, then uh, this x should be unique, so there is no ambiguity. Uh, now we'll show that uh, uh, this language k is actually in MP. So by our assumption. Uh, k will have formulas of size t to the k, which is n to the point 001. So why, the, why is this in MP? Because we can simply guess a string x and the witness y, which proves that x is in the MP language L. Then we accept if and only if the i bit of x is one and the hash value of x uh, equals h. So this is in MP. So uh, now we'll use this uh, auxiliary problem to uh, build an algorithm for L. So basically what we do is to compare the uh, input string X with the unique yes instance that shares the same hash value with X. So to uh, do the comparison, uh, we'll uh, use the K oracle K time, uh, N times, and each time we'll compare one bit. And finally, we return yes if and only if all the uh, bits match. So this is our uh, algorithm for deciding L. And now we'll implement this by a small size formula. Because we uh, want all of them accept, so at the top there is an AND gate. And uh, uh, for each sub-formula, there is a K oracle. And let's look at the input to this K oracle. The correct hash seed S can simply be hardwired into the formulas. And for the hash values, uh, recall that our hash function is linear over F2. So each bit of the hash function uh, is an XOR function over the input bits, which can be implemented by uh, formulas of size N squared. So the final construction has size n times n to the point 001 times n squared, which is smaller than uh, n to the 3.01. And uh, uh, this concludes our proof. Uh, finally, I would like to mention some open problems. Uh, first, uh, in 
our main result, we show that harness magnification can apply to uh, any sparse MP language. So it will be interesting to see if there are some natural sparse MP languages other than MCSP or MKTP. And uh, we could also prove some lower bounds on, on them. And uh, the uh, second question is that, uh, because uh, in our proof and some, in some previous uh, results, the magnification crucially relies on the sparsity of the language. So uh, it will be interesting to see if it is possible to get magnification for some denser variants of MCSP or MKTP, such as MCSP 2 to the M over uh, M cube. Note that for this denser version, uh, we, we know how to prove a cubic formula lower bound. But for, for sparse version, we don't know. Okay, thank you. Any questions? Well, let's thank the speaker and all the speakers of this section. Thank you.